Mr. Colm Gilderney has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Health. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, uh, then they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Health what actions he is undertaking to ensure that COVID-19 tests are accessible locally. And I call the Minister of Health. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, testing capacity in Northern Ireland has increased significantly since the beginning of the pandemic and is delivered through two routes. Firstly, we have increased capacity through our HSC Trust laboratories and through local testing partners as part of our Northern Ireland S Scientific Advisory Consortium. This is known as Pillar 1 testing. My department continues to work very closely with the network of local partners to enhance testing cap capability and capacity. And there are active plans underway to develop this further in response to the recent increase in demand for testing. Secondly, testing is delivered through participation in the national testing programme managed by the Department of Health and Social Care in London. This is known as Pillar 2 testing and currently includes four drive-through fixed testing sites and six operational mobile testing units. And two more mobile testing units are due to be operational shortly. MTUs are deployed in towns and villages across Northern Ireland in response to local need. There is also the home testing option through postal order uh, service, which is delivered direct to a person's home. Demand for testing has increased significantly across the UK in recent weeks, and I am aware that the National Testing Programme is currently experiencing exceptionally high demand. This has at times made it more difficult for members of the public to book a test slot at a time or place that is convenient. Anyone who tries to book a test and is unable to do so, or who is offered a location or time which is not convenient, is strongly encouraged to wait a few hours and then try again. I am advised that more appointments and home testing kits are available nationally every day. I am aware, Mr Speaker, that there has been some problems with the digital portal impacting cases in Northern Ireland, which has caused testing slots to be offered at sites which are outside Northern Ireland. I understand there have been similar issues across the UK. Matt Hancock has personally advised me that a fix to the digital portal is being developed. And again, our key message is that if you experience problems booking a test, please leave it a few hours and try again. Overall, testing capacity is continually reviewed by my department, and plans to further enhance capacity are kept under active consideration. I met with Matt, or spoke with Matt Hancock on a number of occasions through the last week, and the four, health na four nations health ministers spoke on Friday. And my officials continue to be in contact with counterparts in London on a daily basis to ensure that capacity for Northern Ireland is maximised through the national testing programme. I call Callum Gillerney for supplementary. Gormayagat, Chan Kolya, and uh, Gormayagat, thank you, Minister, for, for coming to the House today. And I think we're all very conscious, and I'm sure every member in this House has been receiving a uh, representation from constituents in relation to the difficulties in testing. I'm also deeply conscious that we have unfortunately recorded there has been another two uh, bereavements as a result of COVID-19, and I extend my, my condolences to those families impacted. Um, I would like to ask the Minister, uh, considering your recent announcement that you have written to Matt Hancock in relation to this, I would like to ask, is that the first time that you have formally raised issues of problems with testing with your English counterpart, and also what your assessment would be of any impact this testing disruption has had on the spread of, of COVID-19, given how many people have been unable to access tests? And I, I thank the, the Chair of the Committee for his supplementaries. Um, Matt Hancock and, and well, the four health ministers speak regularly. Testing has been something that has been on the agenda uh, for nearly every meeting. We have had intense, um, co well, intense number of meetings over the past week, specifically in regards to testing and also the access using the digital portal, because what we have experienced has also been experienced by my counterpart in Wales and Scotland. And I think the particular peculiarity that we are seeing is when the digital portal sees a postcode, it's simply measuring it by, by miles 
and not taking into consideration the Irish Sea um, in the middle. Uh, my Welsh counterpart, Von Gethin, actually said they had experienced a similar pro problem with the, the Bristol Channel. So it's not a peculiarity or a problem, it's particular for us, but it's something that has been looked at in regards to the digital programme and how that is actually assessed. So we do have continual engagements. Um, we're also aware today that there is a, a significant backlog in the tests that are being processed through the National Testing Laboratories. Um, we've raised that issue, and I'm looking to see what impact that actually does have on Northern Ireland testing capability and results on the National Testing Pillar. For more data, there doesn't seem to be a significant impact in Northern Ireland, but it's something we want to see to make sure that it's not affecting affecting us on the number of positive cases um, coming through. We're aware that the, the Department of Health and, and Social Communities in, in Westminster is also uh, working with Germany in regards to picking up some of the backlog that, is there in, that there is in our testing capability, similar to the Republic of Ireland government done in the past as well. I call Palm Cameron. And thank the Minister for his uh, attendance. Minister, schools are back, and there's no doubt that there is uh, confusion amongst schools, amongst parents, and even amongst workplaces. And, and there are many schools that are struggling to get through to the PHA to receive that appropriate guidance around risk assessments, um, and they're sending large numbers of children home. The reports then are, are of schools and workforces then demanding a negative COVID-19 result before individuals can return to work or school. So I do welcome the information produced by the CMO last week. Does the Minister agree that it is vital that he takes any offer of help or assistance offered from the Education Minister to bulk up the level of support from his department required to deal with the volume of queries coming from schools and parents at this time? Uh, and again, I, th I thank the member because it, it, it is a valid point and we, we did expect an increase in the number of tests being sought when we did see the return, return to schools because we saw something similar um, in Scotland, just not to the extent that we actually have. So we have been working very well um, between the two departments with, with the Minister of Education. We have a weekly, uh, I think, sorry, uh, we have two meetings per week between my department officials and department officials within uh, education to make sure that any peculiarities or any misconceptions or, or misinterpretations of guidance is ruled out and that resulted in the, the CMO issue in that specific letter um, last week to school principals to make sure that we had that clear sight and guidance. Also over the weekend the PHA has established a dedicated telephone line for school principals so that those school principals can seek direct guidance from the PHA because we do re realise it is a very pressurised but also a very trying time for school principals who want to make sure they're giving the parents and their pupils and their staff the correct advice in regards to, to COVID-19 and how they should be managing each situation. I call Justin McNulty. <coughs> Will the Minister advise um, what has been done to ensure that staff and patients are being test, tested in a timely manner and that res test results are available in a timely manner? And I refer specifically to what is happening in Daisy Hill over recent days in relation to some staff members and some patients of the medical wards. And I want to offer my condolences to the families who have lost loved ones in recent days and also to wish uh, well those people who have contracted COVID and hope they can make a full recovery. Thank you, Minister. Again, I, uh, no, I thank the member for his comments and especially welcome the, the support that's there for those families uh, and staff um, who have lost or been, been involved in the loss of a life due to COVID-19. Um, in my opening comments, I, I explained the, the two pillars that we work on, Pillar 1 and Pillar 2. Pillar 1 is our own in-house testing capacity, that's our health and so HSC systems, and that is available for our staff and for patients to ensure there is uh, accessible and timely testing, but also the reporting of tests and results as well. So that's why we have the two pillars. That one's very specific to, to those staff and to patients who need that quick turnaround. And then Pillar 2 is used for, for the national programme as well, which is accessible uh, to the general public should they develop symptoms. Nicole Allen Chambers. Uh, Minister, uh, whilst noting the very high demand for testing locally, as well as the increase in our own testing capacity, how important have the over 204,000 tests that have been provided by the UK Government under Pillar 2 been to our efforts in Northern Ireland to tackle this pandemic? Um, I, again, I, I thank the, the member for, for his comments, and I think it is important to note that our access to the national pillar and the national testing programme has been vital 
um, for our response to, to processing tests and also to making sure that there is avail availability for testing for those, those people who need it. And I think in, in regards to the past, you know, to the past five days, uh, Mr. Speaker, we're averaging around 7,400 tests in Northern Ireland, so it is a significant amount of testing that we're, we're completing per head of population. And we would be above, I th we would be above testing per head of population, uh, not only in this island in comparison, but also across these islands. So access to Pillar 2 is vital to the programme that we carry forward, because that Pillar 2 in the National Testing Programme is also the testing support that we use for our care homes and the care home staff who are currently green and aren't experienced or don't have COVID positive tests. So, so that Pillar 2 is vital for our response. Call Paula Bradshaw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Minister, my question um, follows on from Mr. Giller news there earlier regarding the number of queries we're getting through our constituency offices. And I'm wondering, are you minded to set up a public representative's um, phone line to, to sort of filter those through so we're not going through um, just the um, general um, helpline? Thank you. Okay, and uh, I thank the member for her question. We are exploring with NI Direct the possibility to do that because even with the with schools come back, we were seeing, I think, was it something like 1,600 calls in the first week. So the ability to filter out, um, and, well, not filter out, sorry, I, I apologise, direct to the right location um, is crucial to make sure we get the right information to the right people who deserve it. So it's something that has been taken forward and, and explored both by, by NI Direct and the Public Health Agency. I call Jerry Carl. Thanks, Minister, for your answer uh, so far. The Minister may or may not be aware that uh, Cambridge University is testing every student uh, once a week, Boston University every student uh, twice a week, and I obviously will agree with me that mass testing is fundamental to uh, el elimination, um, and especially as we just heard as you enter the chamber, a vaccine will not be likely available until 2024. Uh, is there any plans for mass testing to be um, available outside schools, universities, colleges, workplaces to ramp up testing that's required? And I thank the member. Um, Again, I don't know if he's been following announcements by my colleague Matt Hancock in regards to, I think it's Operation Moonshot. Um, I did guide him to suggest he maybe look for a better name, but unfortunately that's, that, that's the direction that they, they went with, which does look for that national testing capability to be ramped up. And I know they're talking you know, some time in advance. Uh, we will be part of that again, as I think Mr Chambers pointed out, because of that national input that we do have to our national testing programme. So when that mass testing becomes available, Northern Ireland is integral to it. Northern Ireland will be part of it. But at this minute in time, due to the capacity that we do have under Pillar 1 and Pillar 2, what I would say to people is use testing capacity wisely. Use it if you are guided to go there and use it if you have symptoms. Don't simply use it to see if you feel as if you may have COVID. It's not something that there that should be abused and something that should be used wisely. And I call Liz Kimmins. And thank the Minister for coming this afternoon. Just in light of the previous members' comments uh, around the, the confirmed cases at Daisy Hill Hospital, um, can the Minister reassure me that health and social care staff will have access to COVID testing? Um, as over the weekend, I have had contact from staff members who have stated they have been refused testing um, despite in the vicinity. So, thank you. I thank the member for that. If she wants to contact my office specifically with with those concerns because if staff are experiencing symptoms, they have direct access to Pillar 1 under their occupational health contacts, so they should be able, if they have symptoms or are in contact with a positive case, they should be, access, they should be able to access that testing um, through the appropriate trust procedures. I call Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and, and thank you to the Minister for his answers thus far. There is no doubt that the um, improving crisis around testing and the accessibility on a local capacity is important, and I hope that we can address those issues soon. The Minister will be aware of the ongoing issues surrounding the local testing centre in Craigavon, which is being used via the MOT centre, and the backlog that that has caused both on MOTs and in relation to holding up the decision to start uh, driver vehicle tests. I wrote to the Minister some uh, two weeks ago on this, and I was wondering if he had considered any alternative sites as had been indicated by his department? Well, well again, you know, it, it's something that I appreciate the, the Minister of Infrastructure support 
from the beginning when she was able to make MOT centres available for, for COVID-19 centres because they were very suitable and fit for purpose for what we needed to do at this moment in time. My understanding is that site is due to close uh, in October, which will allow it to be to be reutilised for MOT testing because I know it is something that is of a particular interest in that specific area. But if, if my call is if I have to make a toss, toss up between testing cars and testing people, I'll come down on the side of testing people. So it will be a managed process while we look for a new suitable site and we'll make that transition as soon as possible, but ensuring that we have continuity of testing in that area. Can I call Orlea Flynn? Uh, and thanks for the answers thus far to the Minister. Um, an issue has also been raised with me locally around uh, variations and sensitivities between the different testing kits. And I'm just wondering, is the Minister aware of any of these differences between the kits that are used by the Trusts, Car Homes and the PHA, as this would be particularly worrying given their use when discharging uh, vulnerable and um, elderly people from the hospital back out into the community? Thank you. Uh, and again, you know, the, the specificity on, on I can never get that word, but anyway, the guidance that we have from um, I take from my scientific advisory consortium in regards to what tests uh, are utilised in each set, setting, but also what tests are applicable to use, um, are, is vital in regards to the work that we do. Because I would rather have a, a test that errs on the side of caution. Uh, than one that produces a number of false positives. So the tests that we do use have been through the system, have been approved for the results that they give and the reliability. So I don't think we're using any test, any test system or any test um, out there that would be something that I would be concerned about, because if we had, I'm sure my scientific advisory consortium and my expert advisory group on testing would have highlighted it by now. Call Pat Kedney. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you, Minister, for your questions and your answers so far. Minister, I'm trying to look at the, uh, the procedure and the percentage of Pillar 1 as against Pillar 2, no noting that most of them are within the healthcare system in Pillar 1. Is there a percentage uh, line between both of those which are coming out, which are testing negative, to find out is one test exactly coming out on the, on the figures against the other one, and we're not missing something on that? I don't have that specific breakdown of Pillar 1 versus Pillar 2 because, as I said earlier on in my answer, they are looking at two different cohorts uh, within society. Pillar 1 is very focused towards your health care system, whereas Pillar 2 is for the general public. But what I, I, I can say to the member across our, our entire testing programme, um, we're now looking at, at the region of over 15 per cent of the population in Northern Ireland um, has been tested, um, which is quite a high percentage. So, again, the access to testing is crucial to us, um, but also the reliability. What we're also seeing in the number of people tested is a higher percentage of those people being tested are now coming out positive. So it's not just the fact that we're increasing the amount of tests we're doing, the amount of people who are testing positive is actually increasing disproportionately to the increase in testing as well. So that is what is raising the concerns that we have raised and the Department of Health has raised. Call Mike Nesbitt. Speaker, thank you. Just to, to, to follow on from the concerns expressed by Mr McNulty with regard to the timeliness of testing for, for patients and staff in hospitals, uh, I should declare that, that a couple of weeks ago I had to undergo um, a process at Belfast City Hospital and as part of the preparation a COVID test and assure him it was delivered not only in a timely manner uh, but by a team who offered professionalism and empathy in equal and for me, equally important measure. So while I accept there may be ongoing issues that the Minister will address, uh, as indeed there must be for, for all aspects of our reaction to COVID-19, I would hate for this House to send out a message to those involved in testing that they are delivering anything other than a first-class professional service, and I would ask the Minister to make sure that those professionals are aware of our gratitude. Yeah, um Again, I, I thank the member for his comments and his sentiments uh, towards the staff, and I'm glad to see him back after, after his procedure, because the point he makes is a valid one. When testing began in Northern Ireland a, sh a short five, six months ago, and that's something we need to, to keep in mind, those staff 
who stepped outside their normal roles and their normal routines to take up positions uh, within our testing system, I think have to be applauded and also acknowledged because they do continue that piece of work um, outside their, their, routine, their routine work. And I think one of the, I think it was when I actually visited the Newton Arts MOT Centre, um, I realised the diversity of those volunteers who had actually come forward uh, to, to, to provide the, the staffing complement for, for those testing facilities. Everything from student nurses to speech and language therapists uh, to professional nurses. So they all played a part and they all continue to play a vital role in our combat of COVID-19. I call George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank the Minister for his answer so far. <clears throat> Minister, is there any local mechanism that can speed up test testing results? As I have a constituent who is a health worker and who has been waiting since Friday to 2 o'clock for their results, and why is there no PHA service at weekends to answer local queries? In, in regards to, to PHA, it's, it's not a, a public call centre. There is an NI direct line which can be used to get guidance in regards to, to regulations. If the member wants to supply me the details of his constituent who is waiting for, for that result, so follow it up and pass it to the Trust for concern. Members, that concludes this item of business, and could I ask members to take your ease presently. <laughs>